let's think about soil very quickly. There's basically three different types of soil particles. There is sand, silt, and clay. In every soil anywhere in the world, no matter where you are, is made up of some type of composite between those three. Okay? So let me ask you a question. Which one is the biggest out of sand, silt, and clay? The individual particles, which one would have the biggest particles? Sand. Sand. Okay, sand. So this represents an individual sand particle. And, and these are fairly representative to their actual size in the soil in relation to each other. So this would represent a sand soil particle. This represents a silt soil particle. And then these little BBs here represent clay soil particles. So clay soils, the individual particles are actually very, very tiny. If these soil particles are tightly woven and we don't have pore space, then what's going to happen? What, what happened with the rainfall simulator out here? Okay, water's going to pot and pool and then run off, right? And last night we talked about it and you know what's happening right now in the Gulf of Mexico. We can get tremendous nitrate, phosphate, leaching and running down the rivers and into the Gulf or into our bays or into lakes, things like that. We can get cyanobacteria bloom. We get a lot of the topsoil, a lot of the sediment. So what we want to happen, what, was, what were the glues that Nathan was talking about? Those biotic glues, glomulin, right? Glomulin. So what happens is the biology in the soil, in particular the microbiology, it takes these glues and those glues basically do this. So they stick those soil particles together into aggregates. And these aggregates each have a space in between them now. And those aggregates allow for air and water to very readily infiltrate and penetrate into that soil. So that's exactly what we want to happen. And it's just as important whether we have a great big sand particle, we want these aggregated together to create even bigger particles as it is for these very tiny clay particles for that to occur. And then once that happens, then we have we can have a significant difference in the soil. So if we have highly ag aggregated soil and we, these, this biology is really cranking for us, really working for us, producing a lot of biotic glues, then as rainfall comes and falls on that aggregated soil, it's just like this sponge. Do you see anything ponding and pooling or running off in this sponge? So highly aggregated soil is just like a sponge. It can absorb and hold an absolutely incredible amount of water. As a matter of fact, a single percent of additional organic matter in the soil that's ag well aggregated can hold an additional 22 to 27,000 gallons of water per acre. Okay? So that's critical in preventing flooding in those types of issues, but most of our soils across North America are like this. So you know what's going to happen. I pour water on this, and that's exactly what's happening across all of North America now. It's very quickly potting and pooling and then running off, and of course it carries with it all of those nutrients, all of that topsoil that's ended up in our bays and our gulfs and our lakes, but it also create significant flooding events and that's why we're seeing more and more flooding events that are that are very severe you know nowadays what are we hearing you know we're hearing we're having 100 year 500 year and a thousand year floods every year or so aren't we so we're going to have to we're either going to have to fix our soil or we're going to have to rename what's a 500 year and thousand year flood <coughs> 